All right, guys, we're at our last stop here, Kentucky Peerless Distilling. The last stop on the Bourbon Trail on Main Street here in Louisville, up at 10th and Main. So let's go check it out. So guys, as you turn off Main Street, it'll be right over here. It'll be this brick building right there. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, we have made it to Peerless. We're gonna head in and check it out. Oh, this is awesome. Very old and nostalgic in here. I believe I've read this used to be an old tobacco. Um, awesome. They have a in-house cat, obviously. Hello. All kinds of seating areas and books and merchandise. Bloody Mary mix. They have coffee in here also. And they sell rock sugar candy. Awesome. And coffee. Oh, they have okra. Sauces. Worcestershire sauce. Soy sauce. Teriyaki sauce. Pickles. Okra. They have their own shirts. Here is one of their barrel tops, as you saw on that thing. Ooh, bourbon smoked sea salt. They have maple syrup. It seems like a lot of these places have maple syrup, so that's really cool. All right, guys, so we're going to do one of the express tours where you go and they'll show you some stuff. And then at the end, you get to sample some of the Peerless Whiskey. Each person will get to try two samples of their either their small batch, their KDP single barrel, high rye mash, double oak. Um, and yeah, all this. So we're going to check this out and uh, we'll let you know. Also, they have two uh, local cats running around. Their names are Rye and Char. Char is in the back, and Rye hangs out in the gift shop. They have all kinds of cool stuff, though. Um, different stickers and koozies. Magnets. These are really cool. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna check out a tour here, guys. Come along. In All right, guys, we're heading on the tour. Very close. And the tour was what? Fourteen dollars a person? Well, Twelve dollars so, yeah, a person. This is gonna okay. be an express tasting for you guys. Express tasting tour. Twelve dollars yep, so a person. Straight through here. Yeah. Yeah. One of their tasting rooms. Another tasting room. Here's the Rick House. Yeah, so this is this is holding about 1,500 barrels. We do have an additional offsite Rick House um, that's holding about 5,000. Okay. Yeah. The smell is awesome. About 30 mi or 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Uh, okay. Yeah, so that's pictured right here. That's uh, where yeah. Very nice. Yep. Yeah. So typically, what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll start aging all of our barrels out there, and then it's up to that four year period we'll bring in here so four year aging yeah yeah so we'll do a four year aging we're never aging anything specifically to a specific age um but we are aging to all flavor profile so there's a legal requirement of four years for bourbon we're sticking with the same thing for rye um and then after four years we'll try it every six months so at four years if it's not ready six months later we'll try that out and, oh, and just okay. go from there yeah Very cool. always experimenting huh absolutely yeah why not right yeah. One day uh, that just takes off and that becomes the best bourbon in the world. Right. You know? That's how that happens, right? Do you, do you reuse the barrels? No. Time? So there's also a legal requirement for all of Kentucky bourbon okay. that you are not allowed to reuse barrel. All barrels for bourbon has to be um, virgin. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Did not know that. That's yep. awesome. I'm not quite sure if that's the case for uh, rye, but we're, we are sticking to the same. Sure. Barrel. Sure. All right. So we'll go ahead and get started. 
Well, welcome in. You all said you're from Indianapolis, so yep. not too far, right? About two and a half hours, right? Yeah, ish. Yeah, this is great. Wherever it works. Yeah, so right on the table, we're gonna have our flavor profile note cards. Oh, kind of okay. gives you an idea of what what the flavor notes are. Uh, Master Distiller came up with when trying each barrel. Okay. So I'll give you all a little rundown of us. Um, we are Kentucky Peerless. We're a small family owned business, about 30 employees here. We're doing about 2,700 barrels per year. Something, wow. Someone like Jim Bean does that in a day. Okay. okay. So we're, we're very on the small side of things, but with that, we're able to do some kind of unique things within the industry. Yeah. Um, what, first thing being, we're doing a sweet mash here. Um, something that about 85% of distilleries out there now is doing something called a sour mash. What that is, is they're holding back 20% of their mash bill and they're gonna save that for their new batch. It creates a very acidic kind of thing to, um, and it's a natural cleansing element, right? Mm. So it's stripping away a lot of those fatty lipids and oils. But for us, that's where a lot of our flavor profile comes from. So we don't wanna do that because in, in return, a lot of that flavoring is getting rid of it. Rid of it. Um, so we're doing something called a sweet mash. Mm -hmm. A sweet mash is, is where you start fresh every single time. Oh, new, okay. new water, new yeast, and new grain, okay? okay. We're also doing something uh, with our tanks. We're steaming our tanks every single time in between each use. With that being said, we are licensed as kosher here. Uh, we have the rabbi come in about every six months or so, kind of overseeing our whole our whole thing here and just oh. making sure we're, we're up to date with everything. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's That's a pretty cool. pretty cool fact. You'll, you'll notice KLAS right here on our bottle that stands for kosher. Okay. Um, but yeah, kind of kind of rare. Our uh, original founder, Henry Craver, was a Polish immigrant Jew, so that was kind of like a little right. toast to him, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, another thing we do differently here is we do a double distillation process. So in, in, in short terms, distillation is basically taking that mash, bringing those alcoholic vapors up and bringing it into a condenser, then turning those vapors back into a liquid. We're coming out at our low wine at 125 proof. We're then doing a double distillation, so we're doing that twice over, okay? So we're t then taking that low wine, bringing it back into a vapor, and then back into a liquid, getting rid of those harsh vapors on the inside of it all. Um, and then in return, we're coming out at our high wine at 130 proof. There's a legal requirement. You can't go into the barrel higher than 125 proof. We are all barrel strength here, meaning that whatever it comes out of the barrel at, that's what we're bottling it at. We are cutting water on the back end of, or I'm sorry, the front end of our process, but not on the back end. So we're bringing that 120 or 130 proof down to 107, going into the barrel at 107 and coming out at whatever it might do in that aging period. So you'll notice on our bottles, we're up in the 115 area, 111 kind of. Um, but a lot of those distilleries out there that have that 80, 90 proof, you'll know that the way that they're managing that proof is by cutting water on the back end. But in return, it's kind of stripping a lot of that flavor away because you're, think of, you're putting something that wasn't aged with something that was aged for a long time. Yeah. Um, so with that being said, we do have three different mash bills here. We have okay. urban, a rye, and then we're also going to have a high rye bourbon. Okay. We do small batches here along with single barrels. Small batch is a very loose term in the industry. For us, a small batch is considered 40 barrels combined together. Um, and then Jim Bean, for, for say, they consider thousands of barrels to be considered in their small batch. Mm. So it's a very loose term. Um, it stretches a long way. Um, but then we also do single barrels. Single barrels is exactly what it sounds like. It's one barrel. Uh, like I said back there, we try, try it out after that four year age period every six months. If he tries it out and it's ready, but it also is very unique and flavorful and doesn't want to mix that in with any of our small batch, he will then mark that as a star. It'll be saved for just that single barrel. We'll bottle only what's in that barrel. We get about 140 to 160 bottles out of a single barrel. Oh, so wow. wherever you see a Kentucky Pier with a single barrel, it's specific to that place. So you'll never find any of the single barrels we have here out in the, out in the wild. And then, right, and then, um, but if you see a single barrel somewhere, like at a local ABC store, yeah. you'll know that that company came in here, tried a bunch of our single barrels and picked one out for themselves, and we bottled it all for them and sent it their way. Oh, yeah. okay. So, and again, we only have 140-ish bottles from a single barrel, so we're typically switching out our single barrels every two weeks or so, which is, it's a fun thing because we're always constantly coming out with new stuff, 
but you know, in, in return, we'll have people come in here on a, on a Friday, fall in love with the single barrel, down the whole thing the weekend of, and come back Monday and we'll be sold out. And the, and the thing is, we can never recreate a single barrel right. just because that aging process is so slow. Yeah. Oh, very okay. cool. Okay. All right, guys. So, what we have here, we're gonna have our bourbons over here and our ryes over here. Okay. Right here is gonna be our small batch bourbon and then the small batch rye over here. Okay. Then we're gonna have our single barrels right here in the middle. This one right here actually came out on Saturday. It's uh, doing very well. Uh, people are really enjoying this one. This one's called our cherry uh, tobacco right here. So any of okay. our single barrels are gonna have these stickers on the side. Mm. We got our high rye bourbon. So like I said, 51% or more corn means it's a bourbon. 51% or more rye means it's a rye. It's a legal requirement. So with this one, it's still gonna meet that 51% or more corn mark, but it is gonna have a higher percentage of a rye, or of rye than a typical bourbon. Okay. Okay. Over here, we got our small batch rye, our single barrel bur or our rye. That's gonna be that wildflower old fashioned right here. And then this is gonna be our um, kind of an experimental kind of thing. This is our double oak rye. So what we do with this is we'll let our rye age exactly how we will let it age, whether it's done in four years or six, whatever it might be. Once it's done aging, we're then gonna get a virgin barrel and we're gonna dump that barrel into those virgin barrels. We're doing a double oak finish on it. So we'll then let it finish off in that second barrel for about a year or two. This one's very pleasant. We also do a double oak bourbon. We'll have, typically we'll have people come in here, about 10 people a day asking about our double oak bourbon. We've won quite a, quite a few awards on it. Oh, cool. um, it's a fan favorite, but I will say about 100% of our employees here prefer the double oak rye over our double oak bourbon. Um, it's very, very good. It gives a nice oaky finish to it, a little bit of earth tone, but it's very subtle. Um, but with that being said, you all get to try two each. Uh, four total. Yeah. Uh, what, do you, what would you all like to start with? Uh, this one is going to be that uh, cherry tobacco, and it's coming out at 113.6 proof. So again, we went into the barrel at 107 proof, came uh -huh. out at 113, okay. exactly like that. Okay. All right. So that's going to be that one right here, and then we're going to pour you the single barrel rye. So this is going to be that wildflower old fashioned. Again, went in at 107, coming out at 111.3 proof. Okay. Right, That's what we're going with. We're Feel each going to try this. Water droplets on the back of those tables. Yeah, we was that that was explained to us where you can try it and then it might change. Yeah, the, yeah, and it does. You know, it's kind of crazy. Is yeah. This is about a half ounce sample. Uh, okay. yes. Okay. Yeah. She's trying the uh, cherry first. Or you want to try that? Oh, we'll, we'll try this one and then we'll do that. All right. There you go. Not a cherry thing. All right, I'll try a cherry. First thoughts? It's tart yeah. like a cherry. Yeah. <laughs> it's tart like a cherry. So. It's complex, so it, you know, you kind of pull a few things from here and there. Um, but yeah, it's... It's, it's fragrant. It. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very fragrant. Not as hot, you know, as you, you might think with that proof. No. Um, but yeah, it's... I was about to say, what's with the tobacco word? So it says a single selection with natural notes of candied tobacco. Oh, the tobacco probably adds tobacco. a sweetness to it. Yeah. And feel free, guys. We have a longer description on these note cards as well. Okay. With all of those. Um, and yeah, again, and tobacco has a fragrance of its own, mm -hmm. so... Right, right. We're never adding any additives to any of our barrels. That's strictly the flavor profile that we're getting from that barrel. Yep. So that first one was right this there. One. Okay. Our, our next try is going to be the rye, single barrel. Mm -hmm. All right, give it a go. This is the rye. This is the floral one. Not as tart as that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will say personally, before I've grown up here, I've been drinking bourbon my whole life, <laughs> maybe a little too young even. Um, but I was never a rye fan before I came here. I always got kind of that Jaeger, kind of peppery kind of feel. Yeah. Um, but with our rides, I hate using this word in our industry, smooth, but it is smooth, you know? It's it's um, it's not as hot and peppery kind of feel as a typical rye. Um, it's very pleasant. A lot of people are a big fan of our small batch as well. 
I always like being like, I yeah. taste it. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I want to see how it Yeah, then we dilute it. Because uh-huh. uh-huh. you would never think being like, hey, it would change it right. a little bit. Right. So. And it's crazy what a little bit of amount of It makes sense, like, what one ice cube would do, uh-huh. you know? Exactly. Makes it not as potent or tart. Back to the cherry. I was gonna say it's not as tart with yeah. that water drop, but we actually had a, I had it over ice, I think I believe yesterday, and it was definitely better than my first try of it with just because it's the know. tart like is a really big punch when right. you do it without, right. and then even that little bit, you're like, okay, the punch comes, mm-hmm. but it's not as strong. Exactly. Got my nose that time. <laughs> <laughs> then it might be a little intense. Either way, you go. Not bad. Yeah, that one, uh, like like I said, that one came out um, this past Saturday. We have been, people have been a okay. big fan of that one. So I want to say we'll probably be out of that one early next week, maybe even end of this week, depending on how Friday and Saturday go. Um, so how does the, because my question with all this is, how does the manufacturing and marketing process come with all of this then? Like, because you get this, you don't really know what your flavors or what your mm-hmm. notes and all that are going to be. Right. So, and, um, so is it kind of like you get it and then you're able to two months, three months later market it and then put it out? Or what's the distance yeah. between that taste and so with, getting it all taken care of? Right. Yeah. So with yeah. our single barrels, we're only really curating the ones here for in, in the store because we're not really selling single barrels like this to them they will come in and they will literally drink from the barrel and they will then uh, kind of work with our team our marketing team is the one that kind of decides the name but they kind of approve it as well so it's a different kind of story when it comes to someone picking out a single barrel opposed to our single barrels we have here okay so yeah i think we spend a little bit more time on the stickers and the label design everything for our single barrels here um, but they are a little bit more basic than these stickers and not as um, descriptive yeah. for the ones like such as total wine coming in here. So when they figure out a single barrel to the day you guys say, hey, it can, comes out this day, kind of what's that time frame look like? Yeah, it just depends on, oh, okay. you know, what we're, it, it, with, when we're, when we're trying out a barrel, we'll mark it and it's totally fine. It's never going to get worse. It'll okay. always get better, you know? So if we mark it, okay, this one's ready. We can wait a year again if we really want it to. Yeah. Um, it might have developed a tad a little bit of a different flavor, um, but I think we're. But at the same time, you don't want six small batches or single barrels at the same time. Exactly. Or you might you might need one at the ready because this single barrel lasted a week. Right. Or the last right. one lasted three. And weeks. that's and that's the thing. We typically are three or four single barrels ahead of time, so we already have probably three or four single barrels bottled ready to be brought out when these run out. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Very cool. Yeah. I guess it's just trying to reproduce a winner, huh? Uh huh. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I will say our our, uh, our small batches they are they are really good as well. I mean, I, yeah. This one is a little bit hot, but um, still very pleasant. It's a yeah. nice earthy cinnamon kind of tones. Um, but then our rye, our small batch rye, is fantastic. I am a, I'm a huge fan. Of Okay. Yeah. We'll have to look for those. All right. I think we want to do that one. Um, I ride the double hook. You got it. Yep. Yeah. We're from Indianapolis, and I this is not really a brand I recall seeing in like even the top in liquor stores there. Right. Right. So, so we are a lot of um, word of mouth kind of. Yeah. So so that's kind of what we're going for. We don't do sure. too much promotion. Um, not to say we don't do any. Yeah. But no, I'm sure you're doing just fine. But right, right. yeah. But, but it's uh, not like you. Exactly, and again, like where we opened back up in 2015, um, so we weren't around for about a hundred years or so. So we definitely um, are building up our kind of fan base oh, still. Look at that! Oh wow, let me top that. Off. Well, no, I was just looking at the color difference even. Yeah. There you go. So that one looks. This one definitely uh-huh. looks a little darker. For yeah, sure. yeah. So that's because we doubled that. You know. Okay. We yeah. Double, doubled it in the barrels. So the closest one here is the double oak, which is by far almost the darkest of what they offer. Mm-hmm. I don't think you can see through any of the bottles except no. that one. Right. Well, I think that's because of my. <laughs>
And this is the MASH high rye. This one's 110. I don't know what that one is. Um, 55-ish. Proof? So that's or percent, what do you mean? Percentage. Percent oh. Number. The proof would be 109. Yeah, 109 proof. Yeah. I was like, that's a little weak. So the percentage is half of what I was looking at the proof, yeah. sorry. Yeah, no worries. All right, we'll give it a try. So I'm going to start with the double oak yeah. right here. Curious to see how you feel about that one. That one's a fan favorite as well. Okay. Double oak has been becoming very popular within the industry. Not a lot of uh, people, I only know of like two or three that have done a double oak rye. Okay. Um, a lot of people are doing a double oak bourbon. Within the past probably five years or so, it's been more popular. And uh, not to say the practice of it became more popular. A lot of a lot of distilleries have been doing it for years. They just, you know, kind of released that name of double oak. I got to say, that would be delicious in some Coke. Yeah. <laughs> it would compliment it And a then, the, yeah, it would. Absolutely. Kind of give you a Dr. Pepper. And then kind of here is the high, oh, I, that, you're on to something. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, here's the high rye. That's not my fit. I probably should have switched those. I probably should have tried that one second. Uh -huh. Because that one's Because all I taste is that one after tasting yeah. that one. Yeah. But... That one definitely tastes sweeter, uh -huh. and then that one is definitely more. Uh, yeah, kind of, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Thick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah, I probably should have flipped those. Which one was that? That one. Okay. Yeah, he tried to switch them. I'm like, don't switch. Yeah. Them. <laughs> Put it back. That one sticks a little longer though. Mm-hmm. Flavors a lot longer. See, I didn't get that because that one like basically took it's over. over. Yeah. yeah. We uh we had a. Uh, I'm still like salivating from that one. I I don't know. I can't explain it, but yeah, it's. We, uh, a few weeks back, we uh, we just ran out, but we uh, did an absinthe barrel, so an absinthe finish barrel. There's a little really? distillery that does absinthe. They distill absinthe right down the road, so we got an absinthe barrel uh, from them. And we actually put our rye in there for only 10 days. We finished it in the... In 10 the house, days? And it, it probably came out over 130 proof, didn't it? No, no. It, it really? It was about, uh, I want to say 115-ish. Oh, that's yeah. surprising. Okay. Yeah, right. Um, so, so it was just a, one of their finished Epsom barrels. It was just the barrel, you know. Oh, then we put okay. our rye in there. So our rye was starting out at 107. Um, but the, it gives it that nice black yeah. licorice kind of spearmint feel to it. Yeah. I am not a black licorice or spearmint fan. Me I either. Really? I loved it. It's my favorite stuff. Well, I'm I guess that kind of makes sense because it's uh, American absent, not yeah. European. Exactly. <laughs> then we'll start tripping balls or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> do you know like, what comes with the holidays and all that? Do you guys do something with the peppermint? We or? have. We okay. have done that before. I believe we've done like kind of gingery feel, like for ginger... Gingerbread. Gingerbread ish, uh, yeah. yeah there's, okay. There's, uh, I've only been here for three and a half months, so I wasn't here this past holiday. Mm -hmm. um, but I have heard some talk of them. Did you put the water in it? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, so we, uh, we're typically. I don't think it changed it much. With that one, I don't feel like. Yeah. Because it's just, you know. Uh huh. Yeah, I will say, I mean, it, it's, it's pleasant, but it's definitely not my favorite. Um, it's cool though, you know, you get a little bit of more of a rye feel with that bourbon feel. After a couple minutes, yeah, I'm definitely getting that one. You know, it's not all, I'm not getting just the flavors of that one. Even watered down. Yeah. It's just amazing because you put two drops in here like that would do absolutely nothing. Right, and then right. you're like, oh. Two drops weird. is probably not even an ice cube so, though. Uh -huh, yeah. Exactly. So that's when you... Once you start a glass, by the time you finish the glass, you could have two very different flavors completely, going on. Completely, and, and that's why just, a lot of people... And it's not like regular soda to watered down soda. It's like right. a real big drink. That's why a lot of people add that ice and let it sit for quite some time yeah. before they start drinking it. Like, I've, 
I feel like I need an ice cube for that one uh, just to like calm it down a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Well, people enjoy cigars with whiskey also. And for sure. Yeah, yeah I'm like, that would change the flavor a little. Kind of flavor, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, funny enough, we have some uh, cigar and a couple of rests <laughs> out there. <laughs> so it's definitely a thing. Double oak, three drops of water in it. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's not something when I tried it the first time. This one sits with you for a minute, don't uh -huh. it? Yeah. That's why I brought up the absinthe, because we were we whenever we got people to try that absinthe barrel, um, we would suggest that that was the last one they would try because it definitely left, left a little yeah. aftertaste to it. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well honestly, if you were doing like a full tasting, that double oak you would want it. You finish that one. <laughs> <laughs> That. Um, that double oak, if you did that one first, it'd be really minus this one because this one I feel like the cherry and the dark come out. Right. And obviously we didn't try the other mm -hmm. two, but I feel like that would still overpower the yeah. rest of the yeah. line. And whenever we are doing a full tasting, um, mo more times than not, we're giving out a bonus pour. So with our full tasting, we have yeah. our full lineup right here. Okay. With an additional yeah. right here. Oh, so, okay. Um, you so know. you do five in a full tasting, you do five pours. Yes. Okay. Unless we're running low on time, we'll do four. Um, but typically, for the most part, we're doing a bonus four at the end. Sure. Um, and yeah, those are the two options for it. So more times than not, this is kind of like the last one people will choose. Okay. But yeah. That definitely takes over everything else, I'll tell you that. Uh -huh. Do you uh -huh. want that to finish that? I won't a minute. What, what was your name again? I'm Chase. Chase? Chase. Okay. Yeah, I'll show that real quick, and then, um, but thank you to Chase. Yeah, absolutely, it was a pleasure, for sure. Glad we could get you seeing that right house and everything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is the sensory experience. So we tried most of these you see here. Skeleton. I will say. All right, guys, check this place out. Peerless yeah, Distillery we have a, we have at 10th and Main. They are a small whiskey distillery. Always trying and experimenting. Very cool. And thanks to Chase for uh, showing us and telling us and educating us. Oh, General Patton? Yeah, so General Patton's right there pictured on the right. Not yes. this one, but the right right there. Um, and the guy behind him is actually Corky's father, our current owner's father. He oh, was, wow. He was his right-hand man in World War II, uh, I believe. And he, um, if you've ever seen the movie Patton, there's a guy kind of following him around yeah. the whole time. That's Corky's father. Uh, right before Patton actually passed away, he gifted Corky's father his 1911 Colt pistol, which is still in the family today. Wow, and, yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Oh. Yeah. Okay, and who's this guy? Uh, that is uh, Corky's father as well. Oh, yeah. okay, just yeah. in a more yeah. formal yeah. picture. Yeah. 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 Formal picture. Right here as well on this side. I believe that that's uh, Corky's father on the right, and then over to the left is um, Patton and Corky's father as well. Oh, wow. Uh, Very cool. Roy and Taylor Jr., but nicknamed Ace by uh, actually Patton himself for the best shot in the military at the time. Okay. So. Wow. Cool, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, so if you'll ever get a chance to come back. Okay, awesome. World War II legends right there. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Very nice, guys. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Well, we're a pleasure. Do you want to I can finish it. They have the medicinal license. So, guys, this shows some of their original series from the founder. Here's their still. Right, exactly. Very nice tour. We just did the express tour, but oh, here is Rye, their in house cat. Very cool. This was a nice little tour, and it's on the lower price budget of some of the tours around. I know Old Forester is um, 
more expensive. I'm not sure about some of the other ones around, like outside of Louisville. But this one was cheaper. It was $12 per person. But they have some really cool stuff here. I would definitely come check out Peerless. It was awesome. All right, guys, that was a look at Peerless. Sorry, sorry, we were bouncing around a little bit. There is Peerless in the back there. We just got down there. How was that? Very cool. And so they gave us a history. Did you get the history of the number on the... Did you record that? Um, no, we were talking to the guy. Sorry, it was off camera. So if you see on the top of the building, right, I, I'm not going to point right. So the DSP KY50, that's actually their licensing number. Um, and so in order to get that number, because it's one of the oldest, he said there's only four others that are older than that. Um, he actually had to, because they closed during the prohibition and then reopened back up. Mm, about 10, less they than 10 They had to file ago. lawsuits, and multiple lawyers later, they got their number no, back. No, it's because they had to show lineage, and they had to show that it was actually going to be the same, not just the same name, but it actually had to be lineage, and that the owner now is actually the grandson of the one that started it. So if they would have not fought for that number, they would have been somewhere above 2,500-ish. So that just shows high. how many yeah. have happened in the last hundred years. I mean, you have 22,500 in between the differences there. So that's why when you see that DSPKY50, they hold on to that, showing they are one of the First original 50 ones. in Kentucky were, yep. to be licensed. Yep. So it's very cool that they've got that number and they show that. But they will go through in the express actually had a whole lot of history too so if you don't have a lot of time a lot of um, information in a short time yep and just like that but you can if you don't want to hear all the history then you cannot and, and they're just, very small very experimental like no batch seem to be the same but yeah very cool even a lot of uh world war ii history going back in the family of the I guess it's probably And you can go to the family. history room when you do the full tour. Um, you're able to check that out too. So, but right now we are going to do the sixth and final one in this section. Yeah, we're um, heading over to Mitchner's, so, guys. So, and I know join earlier us. I said there were, just because I said there were 30 ish, I actually looked through the book here. And, and I don't think uh, I saw these for sale in Peerless, but they could just be in a different yeah, section. Yeah, maybe not. So, um, it is. Were there 42 or 46, something like that? There we go. So here we go. There's the regular Bourbon Trail, 18. Sorry, this is all backwards to you. It takes at least five days to visit. The Craft Tour, which is, you know, the modern one, 24. And then it takes at least six days just to do those 24. Suggested. So there's all that. And then there's the QR code, too, that you'll want to do. Scan this to unlock exclusive benefits. So there you are, guys.